if that pays off. But listen, not all is lost. Our traders are eyeing stocks that could buck this market downtrend and head for a winning 2023. Let's get right to the floor show. Joining me now is Great Hill Capital's uh, chairman, Tom Hayes. Uh, we've got another on the way here. But Tom, I, I want to start with you. Thanks for joining us. Everyone's wondering Thanks about this, you, you know, Santa Claus rally. It's not looking good yet. But in your opinion, could we see a turnaround? You know, could Santa come to Wall Street still? Well, it's possible, Kelly, and great to be with you. Uh, we have till the second trading session of January. What you saw this year is an abnormal amount of tax loss selling, people trying to harvest those tax assets before year end. So if you look since uh, since World War II, the uh, market has been down 4% or more in December, just four times. The average return in the next 12 months was up 20%. Now, we don't know that's necessarily gonna happen moving forward, but just because you have a tough December doesn't mean you're gonna have a bad 2023. And as a matter of fact, we think even if the economy gets a little slower due to the lagged effect of tightening, the stock market can actually do better because the stock market bottoms historically six to 12 months before earnings bottom. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I, I also want to welcome here, we've got Seaport uh, Securities founder Teddy Weisberg. He literally just sat down <laughs> in the chair to join us to tell us what stocks to go after. Thanks for coming here. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you, just focusing in on the S&P 500. Okay, so last year equity, and or at the beginning of the year, equity analysts were expecting that to end around 5,200, over 5,200 this year. What are you now thinking we might see for 23 when it comes to the S&P 500? Well, I, I would remind everybody that last year at this time, actually on December 31st, 2021, the markets finished right on top. And basically, we didn't see a whole lot of daylight for the balance of the year. In fact, the daylight turned to clouds and a lot of clouds. So now it's almost the complete opposite of where we were last year. We're not quite at the lows of the year, but clearly a lot of sectors are under a tremendous amount of pressure and a lot of names are still making new lows. But a lot has changed in 12 months. And the big change, of course, is the Fed. The Fed continues to be the 800-pound gorilla. It's a direction of interest rates. Everybody chooses to ignore the Fed. The Fed. Quite frankly, if you ignore the Fed, you proceed at your own risk because the Fed is still the 800-pound gorilla in the room, in my opinion, and they have basically said interest rates are going to work higher, maybe not as fast, but higher. Uh, everybody's looking for the pause. Uh, wishful thinking is never a good strategy. The reality is until something changes with the Fed and the direction of interest rates, the markets, in my opinion, will continue to be troublesome. It's not the, going to be the end of the world because sure. we know what the problem is and we're not even talking about all the other issues out there. Let's just focus on the Fed. So until that changes, I think the markets are going to be pretty tricky going forward. Perhaps the second half of the year will get better. Uh, unfortunately, they don't ring a bell, so they're not going to tell us what the water's okay to jump back into. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stocks here as we get to the end of the year. The problem is I don't think the downside is completely out of the picture. Well, okay, so you bring up you bring up stocks, you bring up gems. I, I want to bring you in, Tom, because I think we're all wondering, okay, you know, where should we be putting our money right now? Our viewers certainly want to know that. I, I want to bring up one um, that, that you had brought up before. You were on the show back in June, and uh, you told us about uh, Cooper Standard. It's an auto supplier. So why are, are you bullish on that? Yeah, well, uh, thank, thanks, Kelly. Yes, on June 7th, I came on. Uh, Cooper Standard is now up 25%, even though the market's been down. They are the number one in ceiling systems globally, think windows and doors, number two in fuel and brake delivery, and number three in fluid transfer. Um, they announced recently that they're going to complete a refinancing on January 18th. It's fully backstopped by JP Morgan. We think that's the first catalyst. We think this stock can be a double in 2023, a double plus, and a multi-bagger over years. Why, why do we think that? Uh, this happens every recession when they trough. We have two years of backlog for new cars. The used cars are going to do poorly in 2023. New cars, we have two years of pent up demand. We think over the next couple of years, IHS thinks that industry volumes are going to get back to pre-pandemic levels. The company earns $7 a share at its peak. 
uh, based on those volumes. It's only trading at $7.50 a share right now. So you put a 10 or 20 times multiple as it's traded in the past, as we look out to 2023, 2024, and 2025, this can have meaningful upside moving forward. I want to push you, though, in a follow-up on that, because you're saying, okay, the new car demand, right, it's been pent up for two years. Uh, but we're also entering a time where folks are tightening their belts, not wanting to spend as much. They might be losing their jobs. So do you really think that we are going to see a boom of folks going out and, and buying that new car, buying that new Tesla or whatever brand they're looking at? Yeah, well, Kelly, we don't need a boom. We, we just need a normalization. Even if you see the unemployment rate tick up to four and a half, four point seven five percent that's below historic means. The average age of the car, 13.1 years, whether they want to or not, those cars are gonna be, have to be replaced. Then you look at the infrastructure package, which hasn't even hit the market yet, the amount of F-150 trucks that are gonna be on the road. Uh, we think that uh, things are certainly gonna no normalize mo moving forward over the next year or two years. Uh, and the operating leverage in this business, if they can get to $3.50, $4 a share over the next couple of years, you put a 10 times multiple, you really have a, a high, high level uh, return moving forward. So the key is they took the number one risk off the table, which was the refinancing risk when announcing that transaction that's now backstopped. It'll be completed in January. And we think we'll be back on in a few months with another uh, gain to talk about in that stock. And, and uh, we, we think it has a bright future. Well, we'll certainly be looking at Cooper Standard. I want to ask you, Teddy, what are your gems? You know, is, is cash still king or are there some <laughs> stocks that, you know, I and our viewers should be putting our money into? Well, first of all, it's not all bad news because for seniors, people like myself, retired folks, savers, this is a terrific environment because you can get anywhere from three and a half to four percent on your money, whether it's treasuries or money market funds, without any risk. So you don't have to basically deal with the stock market. So for some folks, what the current environment brings is very, is very good news. On the other hand, the best trade still, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I say cash is king, is the three months treasury because it is riskless. It's almost four and a half percent on your money. Why, why stick your neck out when there are so many unknowns out there? But you know, if you've twisted my arm and you said, Teddy, well, all right, that's fine, but I don't care about that. I want to buy stocks. I think the first group, I, the first sector I would look at would be the insurance stocks because clearly they have huge reserves and they benefit from an environment of higher interest rates. Uh, second would be energy stocks because I think energy is fine and I think it's going to work higher. But most of all, what we're doing this time of the year, and this is more for a trader, not for an investor, is every year at this time of year, we tend to look through the, uh, what would you, the, the lumps of coal, if you will, the stocks that are making new lows. With, with Yes, uh, uh, fundamentals are important, but we look for stocks that are trading at their lows, and usually they're there for a reason, but at their lows and multi-year lows, and there's some very interesting names there, sure. uh, such as Medtronics, uh, Tyson Foods, Alanco, and, and there are at least dozens more. And the difference between this year, it's harder this year than last year, because this year the markets have been so bad, so you have a lot of stocks to choose from. This, this is a much better strategy when you have a good market, like you ended 2021, in, because then the stocks that are not sure. acting well are easier to find. Yeah, all right, so lumps, lumps of coal, we're gonna find the diamonds out of <laughs> yeah, there, but right. I was just yeah. looking, I mean, the three month treasury, four point, almost four and a half percent, that's a good point. But thank you, Teddy Weisberg and Tom Hayes, we really appreciate you joining us. All right.